Hey guys, oh, there's people already talking. <laughs> hey, hello. Am I, a few, I know I'm a few minutes late. Sorry, I was on the phone with my mom. But I really just wanted to say hi and um, say happy Corpus Christi. Did anybody make it to mass today? My priest had the best homily. Oh, apparently we were all supposed to write our bishop and tell him how much, how sad we were that mass was not, that we were not receiving the Eucharist because the Eucharist is our daily bread, right? So let's see. I'm trying to think now what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Tell me hello. Tell me how you are. There's a few people trickling in. Um, well, there's like a mess on my bed. Oh, it's Brian's clothes. He changed. Oh, there's like eight people here. Hello. Hi, 22 Vanilla Latte. Um, did you guys get the notification that that I was going to go live around this time? Did that work out a little bit? People were always like, I missed your live. And I was like, oh, that's not that exciting. But, um, hi, Andy. I don't know where my glasses are, so hopefully I can see you guys. Ooh, from Trinidad. Hello. Hello, Michael. I can't read very well with my glasses off, so we're going to, we'll give it a try. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so... Mass. Oh, hello from Phoenix. It was hot there. It's so hot here. It's like 95. Yes, happy Corpus Christi, everybody. This is my favorite, one of my favorite feast days of the whole year because the, the Eucharist is what separates us from everybody else. And that's so sad. I just want, I want everybody to partake in the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist through transubstantiation. So um, it was a beautiful Mass. It was a beautiful... Um, yes, it was just, it was so good. And I just don't know how you read the gospel today as, as a Christian and not be like, yeah, I got to become Catholic because he's like, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you shall not have life within you. It's like, how do you read that and not like, you know, hear that? Like, don't you want life within you? Don't you, I mean, um, my priest made a point how we have not been on a Eucharistic fast. We have been on a Eucharistic famine. Because he's like, fasting is something we choose to do in order to go deeper into prayer, to be reminded to pray, to sacrifice, those kinds of things. This was not by choice. Okay, We do not like just say, I'm going to stay away from the Eucharist on purpose. This was a famine. This was, it was gone. And hopefully, I pray that, it comes back for everybody if it hasn't already very, very soon. And I'm feeling really inspired to like go to mass every single day this week, I think. Michael, was it today that it was this their first day? A lot of priests, a lot of bishops have, are like, okay, enough's enough. We're going to start it today. And Ooh, what did Fulton Sheen say about that passage? I haven't read a lot of Fulton. I have like one of the original books that he wrote. I think it's Life of Christ. Um, is that right? But no, life is worth living. Whatever that one is. The original, like where he takes his broadcast and turns them into a book. What non-denominational belief? What do you mean? Oh, just that they believe it's a symbol. That it's not, that he didn't mean that it was well, kind of like the Jews of the day when they were saying, this is too hard. We, we can't, you know, understand this. A lot of, um, I, I do you mean Protestants? Um, Protestants, a lot of Protestants, if they do communion at all, they do it as a way of like being symb symbolic. Tanisha, you went to your first Mass? What did you think? Did you feel the true presence of Christ there? I'm always curious. Some people have a really strong first experience at Mass, and I think other people, it's a bit of a slower process. Limited capacities, I know. I know, Michael. It's, mm, it is what it is, but it is not... Not good. Did you have to wear a mask? Oh, Tanisha, that's so beautiful. Hello, Octavio. I don't have my glasses on, you guys, so I'm like not. I have to like lean forward. I'm like, what does it say? Cindy, you're getting what? Or is that? I don't know. I'm gonna read that in the best light. So, um, I have not filmed a video for next week. But I'm thinking I've... T oh, no, yes, I have. It's on marriage. It's Catholic marriage. Sent too soon. Okay. I was like, there's that F there at the end. I'm like, are you trying to, like, say something? 
I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I love being Catholic too, Chris. Yeah, it's amazing. And you just want everybody else to come along. That is why I'm in my channel. <gasps> I haven't drank my coffee yet. Oh, it's waiting for me. I'll have to do that after this. I love afternoon coffee. Oh, Andy, why does it get cut off? Okay, um, excuse my finger. So, um, oh, okay, so sometimes Corpus Christi falls on a Thursday. That's interesting. Well, I'm kind of glad it's on a Sunday in the Latin church just because I want everybody to experience it. <laughs> my sister brought her husband. My sister's not Catholic right now, but she brought her husband with her when they were dating to church for the first time and it was Corpus Christi and like we weren't tracking the liturgical calendar so I'm not gonna say what parish I attend because I try to keep I try to kind of keep my location under wraps a little bit um okay so there's like the orthodox there's kind of like three the way I look at it with churches so there's there's orthodoxy so like Greek and Armenian and all those things right and then there's the Eastern Church which is in communion with Rome but they have different rites and then there's the Latin Roman Church, right? So, I'm reading the story of Saint Josephat in our Seton English book, and he really wanted to practice the Roman rite, but the Pope was like, "No, I want you to go be Byzantine." So, side of things, but then like with Greek or Russian or all those other Orthodox churches. If they're not in communion with Rome, then they're still part of the Great Schism that happened in the, the I think it was like 1051 or so. Um, and we just, we pray that they come back. So they have valid apostolic succession. And so they have valid sacraments. So they are still Catholic in that way, but they have, they're in a schism because, ten, thank you, 1054. I knew it was around there. Um, I think I always say 1051, so 1054. 1050, um, so... And correct me if I'm wrong, guys, because you guys know what, a lot more than I do sometimes. But, um, so, yeah. So the issue is mostly the Pope, that they don't recognize the Pope as being... They kind of recognize him as being, like, the one of many. Like, someone important, but not the head of the church. And so, um, and that's why you have, like, these churches that are kind of, like, really based on nationality. Whereas, if they came into communion with Rome, they could still keep their rights. But they need to understand that we that you know the chair of Peter is the chair of Peter, and that they don't have a right to take that away. And so when anyone says, "Well, I'm going to go be Orthodox," I'm like, "You're still you're kind of like a Protestant if you do that because you're ignoring the Pope." And so the churches in the East, like the Byzantine churches, and there's probably others, those are fine. They just they just have different um, rights, and they have a little bit different ways of doing things. But the Eastern Church, if you study history, was really strong. And they, sometimes they have different saints. It's pretty cool because my daughter's name is Chloe. And in their Latin rite, there's no Saint Chloe. But in the Eastern rite, there is. Hey, from India. I can't even say What is that? Kartiki? Um, yeah. So, so there's a Saint Chloe, and she has an icon. So, and then Neil, my, priest, my Byzantine priest, was just saying that Neil um, is actually short for Saint Cornelius. And I'm like, who's St. Cornelius? And I think he's an ax. So I'm going to get my kids both an icon for their, their patron saints that we didn't intend for them to have. But now they have them. Nice little order. So do you guys, um, I don't know how many women are here. But, oh, wait, what, Kurt? Today? You just received your sacraments today? That's so exciting. Yay. That's so exciting, Kurt. Yay, everybody tell Kurt congratulations because he just became Catholic today. Did you, were you baptized in First Holy Communion and, tell me, tell me, tell me. Thank you. Um, thank you, Michael. I will tell her. She and I chat on Marco Polo, so I will totally tell her that you have sent love and thanks. Oh, that's okay, Kurt. You know what? It's okay because that's just beautiful and that means you like totally believe and oh, so exciting. Um... So, oh, that's so awesome, Kurt. We're so happy to have you. Um, yay. Okay, so you're confirmed and received the Eucharist. Oh, that's so exciting. That's so exciting. I like, want to cry for you. Oh, you guys, I'm so, so excited. Listen to this. 
it kind of like curtails on Kurt's news, which I don't want to take away from Kurt's news. We should just all say congratulations to Kurt for like forever. Yay, I love that. Yes, oh, so beautiful. Did it smell good? I can't remember which chrism smells good, but I know there's one. Hello from Italy. Oh, that's beautiful, MR, that they had, yeah, I think that's been happening. It's a beautiful day to, oh, I bet you do. Like, don't take a shower, right? It's like as long as you can. Oh, it's so cool. Um, so I talked to my priest because Neil was, so Neil's technically first grade this coming year, but he is so ready, you guys. He wants to be a priest. He had had a dream, I don't know if I told you about this, that Jesus came to him and said, and Neil said, Jesus, will I be a priest? And Neil, and Jesus had told him yes. I'm like so excited. Um, so, um, cause so I was trying to fast track his first Holy Communion because he'll be seven in December. And so it would have been fine, but sorry, my hair's like bugging me because it's like almost like too curled. Anyway, and then um, we're moving to Germany, if you haven't heard, uh, in January. And so I asked my priest, I was like, can I get him his sacraments, like his first Holy Communion, before we move? And I'm like, we, we homeschool, we do daily mass, we do adoration. Like he already understands sin. He already understands, totally understands the Eucharist, like, this kid is, I didn't tell him about the dream about being a priest, but um, that'll come. But anyway, so he said yes, as long as he like knows his prayers and his first, um, his act of contrition, like I get to, so I got to get him ready, like get his prayers really solid and I'm going to call the priest and we're going to have like a meeting and then Neil gets to do his sacraments like on his own, like kind of like, you know, once in a while you'll see a child receiving their sacraments like by themselves at class. So happy. I'm so happy. And this means that we don't have to do religious ed for like a really long time. And I hope that your religious ed is better than the religious ed that I've experienced for me, myself, and my kids. But let's just say that um, there's always room for improvement. And uh, because we homeschool, he's just like so seeped in his faith already. It's not like there's not anything that they're learning at religious ed that I haven't already taught them. So typically they go and it's just review the whole time. So... So I'm kind of excited that that frees up our evenings and we can do religious ed at home on Wednesdays, you know? So, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. I'm just really excited. I'm really blessed to have a priest that was willing to do that. Um, yes, thank you, Michael. Hi, K hey, Katie. So tell me, guys, tell me how you guys are doing. How is your Sunday? Happy Corpus Christi to those who just came in. We should do some kind of prayer. Does anyone have like a good like prayer about the body and blood of Jesus? That would be a cool one. I didn't plan this. I was on the phone with my mom. So. Hi, Haley. So far, we haven't had anybody trolling around, so that's been nice. Oh, Justice. That's a quite the um, the goal. So thank you. Um, I'm not sure you should be learning English with me because I just, you know, kind of, I'm goofy, but, uh, but that's an amazing goal to talk to Muslims. Like that's, that's awesome. It sounds like the Holy Spirit's really working in you. Katie, you went to mass for the first time. That's awesome. Drops of blood prayer. Ooh, Haley, where is that? Can you drop it for us and we can read it together? Hmm. So are you guys wanting, so are you, are people curious about what's the difference between Catholics and like Protestants and how that all works? Because, well, there's this really fabulous timeline I wish I could put down for you guys. I can probably put it in the description after this video where it shows, it just tracks Jesus to today and there's this lovely straight line where the Catholic Church is and it kind of shows all the branching off of. So you have like the schism in 1054 um, of the Orthodox Church kind of branching off. Hi from Iowa. And then um, and then in, in the 1500s, I can't remember exactly what date it was, um, that's when you had like Lutherans splitting off, following Luther, and then you got Calvin and Wiegler, I think his name is, and then you had like John Smith, and you know, it just it kind of just opened this huge crack in Christianity and Christendom. Christendom, I never can say it's right. 
ended because all of a sudden there was, instead of us fighting the Muslims, which makes more sense, we were like fighting each other because there's all this heresy now in the Protestant church. And, you know, as much as we love our brothers and sisters in Christ and they are baptized in the Catholic church, they don't acknowledge it, but any baptism in, in Catholicism is any baptism in Christianity that's properly done is a Catholic baptism because there's only one church and you become a body, you become part of the body of Christ. Even if you don't acknowledge it as so, it's still truth. And that's why, like Kurt today, well, I think Kurt was baptized Catholic, but I don't know, maybe not. If you're baptized and you become, and you decide to finish your rites of initiation, because that's what's happening is that we have all these um, brothers and sisters in Christ, these children of God, as Protestants, walking around not having finished their rites of Christian initiation. They haven't received their First Holy Communion, and they haven't received, and they haven't gone to, you know, at this point, they need to go to uh, confession, um, and then... You know, and then confirmation. And so this is what's so sad is all these people are walking around and they haven't finished these rites that every other Christian throughout the ages has always completed. And so that's, they're protesting, their form of Christianity is protesting the Catholic Church, even if they don't realize it. And that's what a Protestant is, is someone who's protesting. And so when people say, well, no, I'm not protesting, I'm like, then you need to become Catholic because... That's what Jesus wants everybody to do is become Catholic. And people get really upset when I say that. And I'm like, no, because those are his words, not mine. Like Father Altman, has everybody, has everybody gone over to St. James the Less YouTube channel in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and hit subscribe and listen to Father Altman? Because if you haven't, you're missing out. And you just got to love him. That man is amazing. <sighs> Katie, I wonder that too. There's lots of John Calvin, John Knox, or those other people. Yeah, Con Calvin. Oh my gosh. Um, Saint Alphonsus. Ooh. Oh, it's not letting you perfect. Per copy and paste it. I love Saint Alphonsus. I've been reading some of his works. Um, his like there's like two dollar Kindle versions of his books, like his tiny books, and they're so so good. The ones on God's will. I think it was called Uniformity with God's Will. It was amazing. And it was like 34 pages. So good. You want to do two ha Our Fathers, two Hail Marys, and two Cory B's? Ooh, she just... I don't think I can click that. Someone has to copy and paste it for me because I'm on my phone. A Prayer for Peace? I mean, we could just do, like Haley said, two Our Fathers, two Hail Marys, and two Cory B's together and have intentions for... Uh, all suspension of mass being lifted, right? Because we need our Corpus Christi. We need our spiritual food. My priest today was like, the bishops have been trying to take care of our bodies and they have forgotten our souls. And our, our, our father, give us this day our daily bread. It literally means every day we should be going to mass, right? Ideally, we're going to mass every single day to receive our daily bread. You can say a spiritual communion if you can't get to Mass, but that is the goal that used to be the culture, that we all go to Mass every day of the week. I think that's what St. Bernadette used to do, you know. So good. And then um, and then the thing is, too, is that he's not saying this is not just the priest. Father Altman's like, it doesn't just say the priest should get his daily bread. It's that we all, the faithful, should be getting our daily bread every day. Um... I love Call to Communion. I don't think I've listened to Journey Home, but I I listen to Call to Communion a lot because I find that it te uh, Father Dr. David Anders teaches me stuff, and he goes into how a pro because he used to be Protestant, he like is really helpful with apologetics, like listening to it as a Catholic. Um. Yeah, Saint Alphonsus Liguori is awesome. Oh, I do know about Our Lady of Akita. Yeah, that's some good stuff. It's kind of scary, but not, not, you know, it's okay. Just keep trusting God. Keep looking up. Wow, Kurt. That is a huge, Kurt just got, you guys, Kurt just got confirmed today. Received his first Holy Eucharist. Like he finished his rise of initiation. So everybody needs to say, yay, Kurt. We're so excited for him. It's so awesome. I don't know which hotel is most beautiful in the world. 
Super substantial bread. What is that? F Bishop Fulton's amazing, but you guys need to check out Father Altman because you will feel a little bit of Fulton Sheen in there. Like, trust me. <laughs> okay. So let's, well, so let's do this. So let's pray to our fathers, to Hail Marys, and to Glory Bees. Let's pray for Seattle because don't tell me why that's legal at all. That sounds like complete. Ryan was saying it was like insurrection. It's not, it's not American. You can't just go take over part of the United States and claim it as your own. That's not, that's not okay. So let's pray for Seattle and for all the leaders of our country. Let's pray for Donald Trump, for President Trump. Even if you don't like him, let's pray for him because that's our, that's our call to do. And if you, for some reason, think he's the enemy, which he's not, but if you think he's an enemy, you are called to pray for your enemies. So don't leave Donald Trump out either way, on either side. Um, that would be amazing if, um, yeah, if Trump converts, let's pray for his conversion, for he, him and his family. Um, let's pray for peace. Let's pray for all the churches that open up. Let's pray for Protestants to feel that call to something more. I've made so many videos on the Eucharist and I just like, I will keep doing it because I just love calling Protestants home to the church because I have yet to meet a Protestant who's like, nah, I don't know why I converted. I mean, even if they fall away from practicing, which is so sad in that moment, you know, they're like, this makes so much sense. And most converts, I don't think fall away. Most of the ones I meet anyway are like stronger than some credo Catholics. Okay, so let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you guys know why we do the sign of the cross really fast? Because Jesus says we must pray in his name in order for the Father to hear us. It literally says that we, he won't hear, they won't hear our prayer unless we pray in Jesus Christ's name. So when you do the sign of the cross, part of that is there's like lots of things going on. But part of it is that you are saying in an, like you're fulfilling that prayer to in Jesus' name because again oh I just read some really cool thing I'll tell you in a minute okay in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit amen our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuc and ora mortis nostrae. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, really cool. So everyone, you know how people... Um, so you guys know, I'm just going to ignore your comments for a second so I can share this. You know how people, um, Protestants have a hard time with um, Mary being the mediatrix? That's one of her names. Um... She's the mediatrix, and it's because they get really caught up. There's a, is it Timothy? There's some spot in the Bible where, um, where it says that Jesus is the only mediator. Okay, but here is the cool thing that St. Louis de Montfort in True Devotion to Mary explains. Because I have this book, and I'm like, I wonder if he talks about the mediatrix, because I know she says that she's a mediatrix. I know Jesus in multiple spots, including in Sinu Yezu, says She's the mediatrix, but what does that mean? So Jesus is our mediator between him and between him, between God and us, right? Because God, the father is our creator and we can pray to God, the father, but in our humility, it's like, 
he'll, let's ask Jesus to talk to God, right? But Jesus is also God. So in some ways it's like, well, so we can talk to God through, as in the form of, as the person of Jesus because, you know, he can relate to us and he told us it's okay. But still, in our humility, we still need to kind of keep going down the, the totem pole, honestly, what it is. And so Mary, who is also a creature, is God's mother, but she's also a creature and, and she's also our mother because Jesus Christ gave us gave her to us on the cross. And so Jesus has made her our mediator, mediatrix, between us and Jesus Christ. And then you still have Jesus Christ between us and, and God the Father. And so St. Louis de Mar St. Louis de Montfort actually argues that you should take every single prayer to Mary because in your humility, because it's very hard to talk to God directly because of the difference in all things, right? We're just, these, we're just a creature that he made. So don't feel bad about taking everything, especially intercessory prayers to Mary. So if you want your husband or wife to convert, ask Mother Mary, right? You can ask God and you can ask Jesus and that's fine, but be careful that you're not like I'm just I'm just encouraging you through humility to go to her go to her first cuz she's your mother. She's a creature, but she has a lot of power and so I'm just there's like this hierarchy kind of thing going on. Anyway, St. Louis de Mont Montfort explained it beautifully. So if you have true devotion to Mary by St. Louis de Montfort, um you, there's a consecration in the back of the book, but the beginning of the book is amazing. So it's amazing Marian doctrine. Okay, I'm going to go back and see what's go, what you guys are talking about. But thank you for praying with me. Prayers is so powerful. And I just, I really felt that was really pow powerful. So, um, okay, so Trump converts. Yeah, it's definitely not... It's definitely not normal bread. Um, let's see. God didn't look at our indifferences, so why should we look down at others? All life is sacred to God. Yeah. Um, so I do pray the rosary every day, Michael. It took me a while to, um, well, I was always doing, um, like a 54 day rosary novena is a great way to, to get that done. And then, um, we pray as a family now every night before bed. It's like after stories, like the very last thing we do is, um, I'm sorry. Okay. You guys are distracting me. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. We pray the rosary every day. It's the last thing we do at night. So, um, Sometimes it can be a bit sleepy and it's definitely a little bit of a challenge, but it's a beautiful way to end the day. And, um, and, uh, the kids really enjoy it cause it kind of settles them down and gets them ready for bed. And it's just this beautiful way of coming together and we all do intentions. And so it's a, it's a way for everybody to kind of speak what's on their heart from the day. And then, um, and then to pray the rosary to mother Mary and we meditate on the mysteries and all that, obviously all the good stuff that comes with the rosary. So, so we are now praying it every single day. Um, and I plan on doing that forever. So I'm also part of the comfort. After I read secret of the rosary by St. Louis de Montfort, it's that little tiny book. I wish I had books with me when I did this because they could show you, but, um, see it's in my, um, Amazon store. It's called the secret of the rosary and it's very tiny and it's very easy to read. And he just goes through all the secrets of the rosary. And, um, in that book that makes you want to pray the rosary every day and in the back it talks about how to join a confraternity so i joined a confraternity of the rosary that's what people used to do back in the day when saint dominic was around um so okay i'm gonna go back it looks like there's been a little bit of drama going on here <laughs> um okay so let's see Oh, let me see. What are we talking about here? Oh, so Michael, so some, um, so I really would suggest reading Saint, the Secret of the Rosary, um, or you can also read Edward Cerise, Pray the Rosary Like Never Before, 
but I find going to the classics just helps me. Um, I think when you understand why Mary gave us the rosary and how, like, literally after St. Dominic, no one continued the rosary, and that's when the Black Plague happened. Like, she she meant business when she was like, please, pray the rosary. And she told him, she told St. Dominic to preach the rosary constantly. But um, you don't have to pray it on your knees. Like, it's ideal, right? But you don't have to. Like, last night I was ironing while I prayed. Um, I've prayed while making dinner. I've prayed while cleaning the toilets. I mean, it's just, if it, you can pray it in your car. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's better than nothing. And then it will, it will still give you, I think the car is probably the worst out of all those options because it can be so distracting. But um, yeah, but usually what I do is if I'm doing that is I'll pray with an audio and the fine one with scripture. So it keeps you kind of meditating while you're doing your other task if that makes sense. But you can start that way. You can start with a decade a night um, and see if you can get there. If you were married or have kids, getting them involved will make it to where you have more, or even like a friend you can call up or a family member and say, hey, let's pray the rosary together. Let's pray a, pray a decade together. And then you could always finish on your own. There's so many ways to do it, to get you praying the rosary every day. Just the desire to want to pray the rosary every day is beautiful. But don't stop with the, the desire, just just do it. Even if you have to get up 15 minutes early and set your alarm and pop out of bed in your pajamas and get on your knees next to your bedside like the children used to do in like the 50s, you know? And then, and, and just pray the rosary. You won't fall asleep if you're on your knees. Okay. Yeah, Kurt, getting away from our like phones or things like that. Yahweh is a powerful name. Okay. Um, thanks, Mikkel. Um, happy Corpus Christi. I don't know anything about what's going on there. Um... I don't have Father Ripperger's book yet. I don't have it yet, and I need to. It's been in my cart. I'm doing a no spend month, which I guess doesn't necessarily apply to my business, but I feel like I have so many books and videos I need to make that I just am trying to kind of catch up with what I have and not continually like, my habit is to get excited and move forward and not, and kind of leave intentions behind. And so I want to kind of slow myself down and say, what were the videos I wanted to make? What were the, you know, what are the books I already bought? I bought that Theology of the Body 70 video, you know, conference. And I have actually like ignored all the other conferences that are going on this year, even though there's so many amazing conferences. I think this weekend was the marriage one with all the couples like Scott Hahn and Matt Fratt and Cameron and, and um, all these other couples are doing this like marriage one and it's free. And then if you can't make it this weekend, then you can pay $50 and get it lifetime unlimited. But there's only so much time in a day to listen. And I'm finding myself overwhelmed even with just the original theology of the body one. So I'm not even participating. But if you need marriage advice, but my video this week is going to be on marriage and lust. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Don't look at porn. I'm just going to say it. There's nothing good comes from that. Four rosaries a day, prune picker. Nice. So are you doing, so you're just doing a full, like all the uh, mysteries. Do you spread it out throughout the day? Because I've heard a lot of people, I've heard that when people start praying the rosary, a full rosary every day, it's like they have more time than being like, I don't have enough time to pray the rosary all day. I've heard that the reverse happens, that Mary gives you more time when you give that initial time to her. But I'm curious whether you spread it out or not, because I think I would have to do, and the other thing is, you know, you're opening up the rosary, saying, say the first set, and then at noon you can say another set, and then at like three you can say another set, and then in the evening you can say your last set, and yeah, it's beautiful. I'm not there. And I'm not really feeling called to that right now, but that's a beautiful practice. Well, our five. Oh, that's nice. Dr. Mitnall, 
Yeah. Ooh, child and adolescent psychiatrist. Do you have a channel where you talk about this stuff from a Catholic view? Are you talking about it from a Catholic view? Because if you are, I'm, I'm really interested in like looking at your content. Or even if not, I just love child development. I've been reading Parenting with Grace recently. It's so good. Um, I needed that like reminder about parenting from a Catholic perspective. Um, nice. Kurt. Yeah. Let's see. Oh my gosh, your one year old's watching. Hello, one year old. Um, hello, SN. Let's see. Yeah, you're catching the live. Sorry, guys. I'm really, I'm going to have to go get my coffee. I could take you with me to go get coffee. Do you want me to take you with me? I might lose my, well, I might lose my reception as I walk through. So let's see. Mary is amazing. Um, Ave Maria. Let's see. Uh, Michael, yeah, a lot of Protestants have a really beautiful faith. They have such a love for God. I remember when I was a young Catholic, I didn't understand what a personal personal relationship with God was. They do a lot of amazing things. The man who made the series Chosen, which is so good, the man who acts as Jesus is Catholic, and I think it really, like, my kids are like, you can tell. <laughs> but the man who makes the, the whole series is Protestant, but... There are so many, I have so many beautiful friends that are Christian and they love Jesus. They love our Lord. They're trying to do their very best. And like my only, you know, the reason I'm so annoying is because I just want them to be like, it's like, you love Jesus. Do you want to go see him? Like, do you want to come to adoration with me? Do you want to go see him? Do you want to become Catholic and take him? And he goes into, he's on my mouth. Like he was on my mouth this morning. Like that's incredible. And I guess the, um, I guess the, at least I know that the nuns used to tell people that Jesus was inside you for 15 minutes after. Go listen to Father Altman's homily today. It was so good. It was so good. I'll put it down below. Father Altman's amazing. Who here has subscribed to St. James the Less Parish in La Crosse, Wisconsin on Facebook? I mean, on YouTube. Who here? Do it. Raise your hand. Tell me. Because Father Altman is amazing. He will change your life and you will be so happy. You will be, you are, you will be so amazing. Um, okay. That's true, SN. Just kind of like anything. Once you start, like, I'm always like, I don't want to clean. And then five minutes into it, you know, then I start cleaning. So same with, same with praying. I think the devil really messes with us and tries to tell us that prayer is going to be boring or fruitless or a waste of time. I mean, he really attacks me before I try to pray. Um, and it takes a lot for me to sit down. I really like prayer, prayer journaling right now. And it takes a lot for me to sit down with that paper or pencil and be like, okay, I'm just going to start writing. I'm just going to start talking to God and see what fruit comes from it. Because he just wants to tell me that I'm not. And thank you for saying I'm glowing. I'm like in front of a window. Um, the weather is like 95 degrees and really hot here. No, we don't have corpus. I mean, this is the U.S. SN, where are you at? I'm sorry, but I feel like a lot of Catholicism is lacking here. In terms, especially in terms of like those bigger celebrations. I can't wait to go to Germany. I'm really hoping that in Germany, I've heard that where I am is not the Catholic center. I'm not in Bavaria, I'll be somewhere else. So, um, and I've heard that the church in Germany is really, really modern, which is painful, painful. I'm still going in my dress on my knees and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pop around at every single church over there with my like, all my stuff on. Be like, come on, someone else wear a veil with me. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe they'll be okay. But I had a German responder person. I had someone from Germany respond to one of my videos recently, and they're like, "Why are you cat? Are you American Catholic so hardcore?" And I'm like, "Oh no! If you think we're hardcore, because most American Catholics are, that I meet are not hardcore." Uh, yeah, Brant Pet is it Petra and Scott Hahn are great guys. Okay, the one in Nola and Saint Paul were awesome. Ooh, nice. They recorded them. Oh, that's cool. With ashes? Interesting. I haven't read Our Lady of Akita. I watched, um, oh, I always forget that guy's name. Doug Berry's video on Our Lady of Akita. And I think maybe Dr. Taylor Marshall has one. Um, and I know, I want to say Father Mark Goring has one. Okay. I'm like trying to keep up with you guys. You're going so fast. 
Okay, coffee time with Laura. Yeah, we could do it. I'm having the hardest time coming up with a logo. And I was trying to get one done with this this really sweet woman and I just it just wasn't working out. I just couldn't decide and then I'm like I just want like a coffee cup, but like that's not really my channel. I don't know. But yeah, coffee time with Laura would be like a fun that would be like a fun way to call maybe I'll just want to call my live videos now. It's coffee time with Laura, but I'm not drinking coffee. Um Oh, Michael, I'm sorry that you're going through struggles like that, that you have those crosses, but just know that whatever crosses you have, even I think, it's funny because sometimes people will say anxiety or depression aren't from God, and it's like, mm, really everything is from God. Any kind of suffering is from God. And so, like, I've struggled with anxiety, and it's not, when you get a panic attack or the beginning of a panic attack, it is crazy, but I've found that the recently when I've gotten them, when I just kind of like envision laying with Jesus, like having him like holding me through it and just accepting it and trusting that he'll get me through it, it's a different kind of panic attack. It's still terrible, it's still miserable. But I would rather have panic attacks every day in here than be in purgatory one second away from God, right? So that's the beautiful thing about our Catholic faith is that we embrace suffering, we acknowledge suffering, we and we just acknowledge that every single thing comes from God for our sanctification and that he also gives us the grace to get through the suffering. But it doesn't take away those scary moments when anxiety can hit or depression. I I don't think I've ever struggled with depression, at least not severely. So I can't say what that walk is like because I just, I don't know. But from what I've seen, it's, it's a cross. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to say that you shouldn't have it because that's only up to God, right? And God is all good and all loving and all knowing. And so that's where I think that trust comes in. All right, let's see. I need to just read all of these comments. <laughs> I'm so back, like way back here. Um, <laughs> I don't really witness a lot to my Protestant friends in person, but I actually don't have a whole lot of Protestant friends right now. Um, okay. Christmas, you're already waiting for Christmas. Hey, Jared. Um, St. Catherine of Siena. I love St. Catherine of Siena. You're in Germany. Oh, you're, oh, hey, oh yeah. Bavarian girl. Oh my gosh, yes. Did you send me the video messages? You are so, you are so cute. I just like, not in a weird way, but you were like so adorable. And like, I'm just like, it was cute. I was like, oh, I'm like, those were the cutest messages. And I really appreciate that. I think I am gonna get that missile you talked about, about the German one. But you're so lucky in Bavaria. I'm like, I wanna to go to Bavaria. Um, oh, your mass, your parish has processions? Oh, yeah, TLM. I know, we're all so excited for you and I forgot how to pronounce your name. Is it, it's not Bayo. You told me that wasn't it. Tell us again how to pronounce your name. But he just got in seminary, you guys, so yay! So we have Kurt who just became Catholic today and we have, I'm gonna say Bayo, but that's not right, um, who's starting a seminary soon, so so exciting. It's so such a blessing to like be in communi communication with you guys. Oh, you were Northern Light? Oh, it's all starting to click in. Okay, SN, that's funny. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. You guys keep changing your names around. I'm never gonna know who's talking to me. Are y'all witnesses? What's that? Working with us? Oh. Oh, we're Catholic. Oh, that's adorable. Someone thought we we're Jehovah's Witnesses. That's adorable. Um, if it's similar to Switzerland, there might be some processions, but otherwise rather modern. Do you, um, Natalie, do you receive on your knees? Because that was, and is, okay, and both of you, is communion on the mouth standard because I know it's here it's not but that was through some ridiculousness of the USCCB and like one one priest so I'm hoping that at least in Germany communion on the tongue is the norm I'm hoping kneeling is on the norm I'm gonna kneel anyway I know there's been at least one country where someone told me that their priest told them to get up off their knees hands no what Michael are you over in Germany like Europe too don't tell me that the hands is normal um, all right. 
Wait, where are we going? Oh my gosh, I'm still back here. Okay, so Natalie's talking about um, Switzerland. Okay. Um, I did go to Mass today. It was beautiful. Okay, we're talking about Happy Corpus Christi. Yeah, I have to look at how long it's going to take me to get to the Vatican. Oh, Dr. Kreef. You know, Dr. Kreef's book, is that a book? Making Sense Out of Suffering? I've heard that's a really good book. So, Jared, I'm going to say, yeah, my, my understanding, based on everything that I read about will of God, is that nothing, every single thing is from God. Everything is willed by God. So, you don't say that, um, yeah, God, oh my gosh. Gottslav? That was a Gottslav. That can't be right. I know. Oh, oh, you guys are here. Tell me how to pronounce L-E-C-K-E-R. Okay? Because all the German I've been studying says Lecca, which I'm sure that's wrong. I mean, I'm probably saying it wrong. But Lecca, like with an A at the end. Oh, that's right. Bow. Thank you. No, bow. You said bow, wow. Bow. Bowser. Okay, bow. So like bow. That's what Okay, so, okay, but, so L-E-C-K-E-R, Ryan took five years, like, a lot of German, and he says you say Lecker, and I'm like, mm, all of the things I looked at, see, thank you, Kurt, Lecker, that's right, okay, so, someone needs to somehow contact my husband and tell him it's not Lecker, and I'm gonna, like, <laughs> it's so funny, so, anyway, one of the apps I was using had, you know, this breakfast, the breakfast here is delicious, right? So it was like, it was, I'm not even going to try the Frocken, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, I'm not going to start, but thank you. Lekka. So I don't know why he thinks that the ER makes an er sound. Um, it's so funny. Okay. What are we doing here now? I'm going to go back. Okay. Yeah. Can't wait for the second coming. It's going to be exciting. Nice, Kurt. That's awesome. You're Iranian. That's awesome. We will pray for him. You didn't have any mass? Ugh. What is Ireland just shut down? What does hands mean, Michael? <laughs> well, the, of course I can receive on the tongue because the Vatican says you that, that is the norm per our church is on the tongue. And then the hand is like the exception which is ridiculous because both Italy and America's Catholic medical associations have come out and say that the hand is more dangerous than the tongue. But today my priest, he must have touched somebody before me. I don't care. But he, he like sanitized his fingers before he giving me um, the Eucharist. And it, so Jesus, like it's like Corpus Christi, and I'm like he gave me one of the pieces from the consecrated host that he held. So I was just expecting it. Sometimes he, Jesus has been tasting really sweet, and it's this really beautiful moment. And I, I put it in my mouth, and it tasted like chemicals. And I think he said that it was like 80% alcohol with like 20% hydrogen peroxide is what he was using to clean his hands. And so I was like, okay, Jesus, I take this. This is a form of humility. I still believe this is totally you, even though it tastes disgusting. I just, I still love you and it's still you. But, and then Chloe came into the pew and she had this funny look on her face. And I was like, Chloe, it's okay if Jesus tasted like chemicals today. It's still Jesus. <laughs> so it was just, he had used, it did have hydrogen peroxide in it, but it's, it was like, it, it was like the, he, you know, he dipped his hands in something and then he, you know, administered the host. It wasn't like drinking it. <laughs> it wasn't like the body or anything. Um, oh, I love Cat Stevens. Someone just told me about Cat Stevens. I love Cat Stevens. I'm so glad he's not, um, he changed his name back. Um, okay, Dr. Kreft. I already answered Jared. Okay, we're just moving along. Iranian friend, I got received. Okay. Yeah, I've heard Cat Stevens. I know all the Cat Stevens songs. I'm a huge Cat Stevens fan. Love him. Okay, it's a book. Thanks, Haley. Yeah, okay. Bow, yeah, we're really excited for you to go to seminary. I hope you are going to a traditional seminary. And I really, really pray for you that there's no shenanigans in your seminary and that you will be given a very beautiful, devout, and orthodox education. 
Um, I'm sorry, MR. Thinking about Lekka. That's fine. Yeah, delicious. Yeah. Um, there is a slight R, so like Lekka. I can't do it. Yeah, Google account. So if you have schizophrenia, unless you have somehow opened some kind of door, which you could get exercised and see if it goes away. So Father Ripper has talked about how some mental disorders are possession and that um, he was doing exorcisms. I don't remember what video this is in, but he talked about exercising, especially like bipolarism and schizophrenia. And sometimes after multiple exorcisms, it goes the disorder goes away. But even if it was... Even if it is possession, Jesus has to be allowing that. Like, God is in control of everything, even the demons. And so the fact that the devil even exists, God has to will that, right? He's a creature like us. Um, does that make sense? So I would actually, if you have schizophrenia and you're interested, I would almost, I'd probably talk to your priest about, like, when it started and see if there was um, maybe something you could do spiritually with it. But whether it goes away or not, you know, it is... Yeah, everything's from God. Oh, are you being mean, Dumas? What? You were talking witness and being evasive? Hmm. Okay. Um. Okay. What are hobbies I have? Good, I'm so tired. Jesus is the bread of life. Yep. Um. Jared, go through with it. And I was not ignoring your messages, by the way. I was just, like, busy with life. So I, I want you to keep messaging me, but sometimes I can't get back to you. So just, um, if I don't respond right away, just have the confidence that I'm, watch, that I'm you know, I'm interested in what you have to say. I just can't. Sometimes, sometimes I didn't feel like I needed to respond. So I just, I read everything. The first thousand years? I'm not sure about the first thousand years in the hand. Maybe. Okay, a catalyst. What are you talking about? I'm getting tired, you guys. It's been almost an hour. Our master is July 1st. We have the book of place only allowed once a month. Mm, sorry, that's just terrible. Yeah, I said Cat Stevens. Someone asked me if I like tea with. Well, I don't know the album's names. I have, like, the best of Cat Stevens. I love Cat Stevens. Um, she calls him Bow Wow. What do you guys... It says... He said that's how you pronounce his name, is he was saying, say Bow Wow, and then it was... But that's not what I called him. Bow. Like, bowing. No mass in Ireland? Oh, my gosh. Is there mass in Germany? Please, someone tell me there's mass in Germany. Yeah, formerly known as Cat Stevens. I think he went back to his name. Oh, Natalie, are you supposed to be receiving it soon? Oh, I'm so excited for you, Belle. I really hope. Just stay true to yourself. Oh, I wish I knew it. Father Altman had a, a video about seminaries and some of the things um, that were going on in there. And I just, uh, yeah, I have, I just pray for you. Um, hopefully it'll be one of your, one of the good seminaries. There are good seminaries in the United States. Um, advice for young Catholics dating. Yes. Only date if you want to get married and are ready to get married and can live on his income and do not have sex before marriage, do not shack up, do not really do anything. Learn about theology of the body, learn about natural family planning, and just give each other a lot of respect and grace and get to know one another in very pure, beautiful ways. And then, and just make sure it's somebody that you wanna live with, you know, that you want to be with for the rest of your life. Make sure that you honor and adore him and uh, and are in awe of him and respect him that and he does the same for you all that kind of stuff yes i can make a whole video about that not that that's what i did but that is what i wish i had done and that is what a good catholic does 
Thanks, guys. Yeah, I would love to get 20,000. That'd be fun. Um, okay. Okay, Haley. Yeah, okay. 50 years. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that, um, yeah. Cologne. Cologne, Cologne, Germany is pronounced Cologne. Is that what's going on? Okay. Natalie, I'm excited for you. Did I give marriage advice? When? Just now? Not just now, right? Did I give marriage advice? I didn't even catch that. Um, buy a prune picker. I know. I got to go too. Um, you guys are... Um, okay. All right. Well, there's 41 people here. Hello, everybody. Um, you guys are doing cute German stuff. I don't know how to say all of that stuff. Um, hobbies. What do I do for hobbies? This. Um, oh, I'm starting a new exercise plan. I'm going to do 22 hardcore. I think that's what's called. So I just rejoined Beachbody again. I'm not going to sell it. Don't worry. But Beachbody is the way to get in shape. If you were like, I want to just feel strong and good and amazing. Um, at least that's how I've always gotten in shape. And so I, I ordered Shakeology and I'm going to do 22, 22 hardcore. So I would say like my hobbies are working out, um, studying like child development. And, um, I do like to, I just started knitting. I can crochet, but I, not this time of year. I usually don't do that stuff. Um, I can play the piano, but not very well. And I like to read a lot, obviously. <laughs> and that's probably it. That's probably it. Yeah, Heather and I, Heather and I, uh, Marco Polo. So we like chat like this, but back and forth, you know, not live, but you know, sending each other messages. Who, who do you guys use Marco Polo? It's so fun. That would be fun to do with you guys, but that would be like really intense. I wouldn't have like time to do anything but Marco Polo. No, but that'd be fun. Don't do yoga. Don't do yoga. Find another workout. Do not do yoga. I have a whole video on yoga. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, thank you. Okay. I was like, marriage advice, but yeah, I do have a video on how I started a channel. I did it back in January of 2019. And I thought it was going to be really exciting. And then no one watched it. And I was like, well, that was my advice. That's all right, though. Um, do I have a piano? Yeah, I have a keyboard. I have the same keyboard that I learned on when I was like in fourth grade. Um, so. MR, that's awesome. You're doing weight training. Yeah, so 22 hardcore is like military-esque style training. And I, I've done P90X3. And um, that was that's an amazing program, but I really like his warrior workout, and so this is kind of kind of like that. Um, let's see. I'm not sure it's like the best video ever, but it does show how I, at least at that point I was making YouTube videos, and I had over I think I had like 3,000 subscribers when I made that video. I do too, Michael. Yeah, stay away from yoga. It's because it's opening a door. Jared, are you not? Are you wanting like to go to the gym? Wait, hold on. What's this last one here? Yeah, so there's a book out there I haven't read yet, and I don't know if Catholic Brian. So Catholic Brian at Catholic Truth just came out the book, and I bought it. I haven't looked at it yet, but it's about um. Like, all the things we shouldn't be doing, like Reiki and, like, um, I don't know if he talks about feng shui in there or not, but, um, you know, yoga, meditation. I think yoga might be in there. All that new agey stuff. I didn't realize feng shui was bad until recently. <laughs> like, whoops, that's really hard to unlearn. Feng shui is very hard to unlearn. And, like, I can't put my bed under the window. <laughs> oh, it's just all superstition. It's terrible. It's stupid. And, yeah. Um, anyway, so... Trying to unlearn that has been rough. Just like yoga is hard to unlearn, which is why I stay away. Um, Father Groschel, what's superstitious? Feng Shui. 
just pretty much anything that's outside of God, right? So anything that doesn't come from God is superstition. No, Jared, no. Don't, um, don't let her teach you yoga. So the problem with yoga is that it's, even if as Americans we're just like, oh no, we're just stretching and exercising. It was created <laughs> as a religious movement and the goal is to like open this third eye, right? And so it's, it's, it's seeped in Hindu religion. And so you're taking a Hindu religion being like, yeah, well, I'm just gonna get over here and stretch and just take on, do bird pose, just to do bird pose because it's kind of a cool pose. But yet that was a religious, that is a religious like moment prayer to Hindus. Why would you, why would you even touch that? And like Hinduism, those are all demons like Krishna and stuff, those are all demons. So why would you touch anything from that? Like, that's the problem. But in America, we're like, oh, this is hip, this is cool, and it gets you in shape. So, you know, that's what people, and it's like, it's just stretching. And then there are all these amazing success stories. Have you guys seen that video where that guy could barely walk and he worked with a yoga instructor and then he was like running at the end of the video? Like, that's amazing. That's a beautiful healing. But it's not from God. So it's just like, ugh, I don't know. Just really, no. Okay. No yoga. There's so much other things to do. Go do, I don't know, something else. Yeah, right? Yeah, I can't have the bed facing the door, and you can't have pictures of your kids in your bedroom, and you can't, and then I'm like, wait, I'm Catholic. I, I can, of course I can have kids in my, of course I can have kids pictures in my bedroom because the whole point of coming together here is to like be procreative and to, you know make kids and so it's just like why would we keep the kids pictures out of the bedroom but for so many years i was like we can't have pictures of our kids in our bedroom <laughs> hence why the walls are sparse so anyway stupid 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 anti-catholic stuff um my favorite breakfast what is my favorite I really like when I make pancakes and I made a day in the life video for you guys last Saturday and so it's gonna come out in two weeks and I made like pancakes and I put, I don't put syrup on it, I just put frozen blueberries that I warm up on the stove and I make these pancakes from scratch and it's so good. And I really like bacon. Um, let's see. Oh, Kurt, just don't worry about it. It's just um, feng shui stupid stuff. Yeah, it's really hard to undo the damage because I don't know about you, but I had like demons showing up um, in my like psyche. I don't know how to explain it. That's awesome, God Nod. Anti Mary Exposed is amazing. It's awesome. Thank you, Donald. Um, oh, thank you, Richie, for <laughs> it's always nice when someone from India like says I'm right, but I mean, or says whatever. I don't know how to say that. Um, hey Monica, I'm about to get off because it's been over an hour, but I'm glad that you made it for a hello. Oh, what's Santa Muerte candles? Should I even be saying that word? Is that like, um, like stuff from Day of the Dead? Is it Muerte? Oh, my phone's going to die, so now I really have an excuse to go. <laughs> it started to rain. You know what? Never, ever complain about the rain, you guys. Don't complain about the weather. The very ba I talked about this last time. One of the very basic things you need to do to align your will with God's, which is what should be the only point of life, is never, ever complaining, especially about the weather. No, Donald, I'm leaving because <laughs> I have to go. I have to go drink some coffee and go sit outside and read my book on parenting and, and, and do that. Um, okay, let's see. I'm, you guys have to stop talking so I can read all these. Hail Mary, St. Michael fixes anything. Yeah, that's amazing. That's true. Oh, I'm sorry, Jared, that your back got injured. I mean, God's will. <laughs> that's not, I know it doesn't make things easy in the moment, but trust me, any suffering you can use in a really beautiful way. Yeah, exactly. Whatever is not from God is from the devil. Oh, man, Ray, um, is it Raquel? I, that happened to me too. It was terrible. Progressive spirituality, yeah. Now you guys are making me want to go read um, Catholic Brian's, um, you guys know who that is? 
I love Catholic Brian. I shouldn't have last, it's Brian Mercier. I think that's his last name. Anyway, I need to go, I want to go read his book now. Saint Death. Um, how do you find God, Donald? Well, I would suggest looking into the Catholic Church because that is the church that God created. And so you can find God in two different ways. You have like the natural, so you're keeping me on, but you have the natural way you can find God, which is, so Logos is written in our hearts, right? Because God created us and he put the word in us. And so even without a formal church, you can find some of God. You can find him in the beauty of, you know, God is all knowing, all powerful, everywhere. And there's one other thing, right? All good, I think I said that. So a lot of that you can find out through nature, but he also gave us, then his son, which is also God in the Trinity, in the Trinity came down for and became a human like us, well, God and human, in order for our, to save us to and to teach us how to live. And so then when he, he started the Catholic Church, which is the body of Christ here on earth with the Pope as his head, and the purpose of the Catholic Church is to teach the sheep what I'm almost done. Oh, say hi. Everyone said hi, Ryan. Um, so the, I'm like butchering this a little bit, but the, the whole point is that the Catholic church is going to help you find out about God and the sacraments. And there's, it's like so much to say, like in one moment, but, um, yeah, anyway, sorry. That was probably terrible. Just, I really suggest, um, opening up, go get a Catholic Bible and read through the four Gospels, starting with, I would say, Matthew. That's just usually what I say. And um, and then you could, you will get to know God through his word, which the church gave to us, like the Catholic Church gave that to you. Um, and then kind of go from there. But yeah, there's it's like a lot to say. But that is, you find God through prayer, through his word, and through his church, if that makes sense. Um, okay. Um, um, let's see. I love the rain too. Actually, the, the Anglican church is not, they don't even have valid orders. Like you don't have, um, apostolic succession. So the Anglican church was started by, um, horny, you can call him horny Henry, but he wanted a divorce so he could marry, um, Anne Boleyn. Is that right? Anne Bole. I think that's her name. Um, and so he divorced his good Catholic wife, and then he killed his best friend, St. Thomas More. It was really a mess, but yeah, that's not, that's not the church that Jesus started. That would be nice, Michael, that everyone received um, a blessing. God is everywhere. So yeah, that's true. Nature can be scary because God is really powerful. Um... Oh, interesting, Jared. You're like, um, oh, who are you guys? Like, like St. Um, Ignatius of Loyola. Is that the one who was a soldier and then he became ill and then he could only read like the Bible and the stories of the saints and then he became Catholic and then he went out to the to the wilderness, right? Because he had a lot of issues with like lust and vanity. And is that right? Is that St. Ignatius of Loyola? You should read him, Jared, because I think you would really like find a connection there. Okay. No, the Protestant church is Protestant for a reason. Yeah, justice, that's right. Okay. <laughs> guys, all right, guys, with that, it's been, oh my gosh, 70 minutes. So I want to say thank you so much for hanging out with me, for being here on this live video that I just kind of randomly did. And I hope everybody has a beautiful rest of the day. Happy Corpus Christi. Um, May many, many people come to find the truth in the Eucharist in the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And I hopefully will talk to you again, I don't know, the next seven days or so. So just um, make sure that you hit the notification bell and click always because right now it's the default, even if you click the notification bell, is not always, it's only um, like kind of randomly. So anyway, I'm off. Gonna go see what my kids are doing. It's Sunday, so you know. Gotta hang out with my family. So I love you all. God bless. Have a beautiful day. Continue to know God, love God, and do God's will. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.